Hello everybody in YouTube land and welcome to CNG Appliance Television and this is from the mind of an appliance technician. I am your host Chris and I thank you guys so much for being here with me today. You could be 10,000 other places on YouTube but you're here hanging out with me and I super duper appreciate it. So without further ado let's get the shop announcements out of the way. Um, in the shop, I mentioned on the last episode that I had a Hot Point refrigerator and a uh, Galaxy refrigerator going out this weekend, hopefully. Well, I had a Galaxy refrigerator for sale. I had some bites and things like that. Nobody ever really responded back. But I actually had to change the guy that bought the Hot Point out for the Galaxy, which is no big deal. I was asking the same money for it. I was kind of hoping the Hot Point would be fine. It's kind of weird that, you know, the compressor, he called me and he said the compressor started making noise as soon as he plugged it in. But he set it on a trailer and he lives down a dirt road. So he jounced it around, I'm sure, pretty good getting it into his house. Um, so therein lies my theory as to what happened. If you take a refrigerator compressor, they are hermetically sealed, just as every single refrigeration compressor or cooling compressor has to be. Okay, they have things, they have refrigerant circulating around in there that shouldn't or can't really get into the atmosphere because it's really, really bad for the environment, okay? So they have to hermetically seal these compressors so that nothing gets out or in. That said, uh, there's a little assembly in the center of it that sits on a uh, the, the piston and everything kind of sits on a little platform that's suspended by springs and the springs can sometimes wear out and break especially if they're old and they get jounced around and everything like that um, if it was fixing to give out anyway it, it probably happened and what happens is is that assembly falls and it rattles against the side of the inside of the compressor. Now the assembly, the, the compressor is still doing its job, it just sounds like a bucket of bolts when it's running. So I think that's what's going on. We're going to plug that into the wall uh, at my shop and we're going to see how that works out. So uh, I switched him out for that Galaxy and I only made a hundred bucks off the pair, which whatever, I mean I'm still making money on things, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't hurt me much any, and I'd rather make things right for my customer. Which brings me to my next subject. And this is related to something that I really can't get into that happened uh, at the shop last week. It was, I believe, last Thursday. Our install crew was caught on video, let's just say, acting less than professional. Um, guys, I can't stress to you enough how much professionalism in any service related trade matters. It is something I take extremely seriously even in selling appliances. I'm not a shyster out there to sell junk to people and pass it off as good. That's not what I make my living doing. I make my living doing honest to goodness work. Um, you know, I'll shoot straight, I'm going to tell you what works and what doesn't. Um, like I'm a big fan of Speed Queen, for instance, and I, I know I have said that on my channel before, but that's because they work. Um, and even though they're built a lot different nowadays than they used to be, they're a lot better of a machine than anything else out there that you're going to find new. I want my customers as happy as they can be, so I recommend that to them. So. I'm a big believer in treating people as you would want to be treated and treating places as if they were your own. Like would I want a washing machine drug across the floor when the two install guys putting it in have got a dolly? No. I would not want that. Um, even if they say, oh well the machine has feet and it's not going to hurt anything, it doesn't matter. Okay when you enter someone's house there is a burden of trust placed upon you you are there to do a job you are not there to snoop around you're not there to mess around you're not there to do anything aside from what your job is there like if you're there fixing a dishwasher 
you stay confined to that kitchen. If you are there uh, fixing a washing machine, you stay in that laundry room. That is, I, I thought that was a given, but I'm starting to find out that it's not. Um, I have spent the majority of my life in service-oriented trades, so I've learned what it is to be honest and to be straightforward and to have integrity. And that is something that I wish to preserve throughout my career because this is something that I have staked my life on. I, I chose this profession. I chose to be an appliance repair technician. And I take my reputation as such very seriously. So when people at my company do something stupid, it also reflects on me and I take that extremely personally. So professionalism, what is it? I believe that professionalism rests on three tiers. First, you have your appearance. When I show up to the house, what do I look like? Am I dirty? Do I have a collared shirt on? Am I there ready to work with my tool bag? Uh, do I uh, have stains on my pants, on my shirt, things like that? Am I, do I have long hair? Do I appear like I am there to work on your machine? Like, do I, do I smell good? Um, do I, and this is all something that when the customer opens the door, they're going to see. They're going to take a look at you, and they're going to take a look at the ride that you're driving. Okay, that's the other thing, is they're going to take a look at you, and they're going to take a look at your vehicle. And they're going to say, okay, either this guy's legit, or who the heck is this guy? You don't want to be that last guy. You don't want to be the people that they're looking at saying, mm, I don't know, who is this guy? Number two, attitude. Okay, attitude is a huge, huge thing. Uh, yes sir, no sir. Always answer the customer with sir or ma'am. Don't ever, you know, use dude or bro or anything like that. No, don't do that. Nothing. If you think the customer is attractive, keep that crap to yourself. You're you're not there to 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 do any of that kind of crap. You're there to do a job. That all goes back to the fact that you are there to do a job, and that's it. There's nothing else there. So, attitude. It also, and also, you know, confidence can be wrapped up in attitude. Um, and I don't mean being cocky, like, oh, I can fix anything, you know. Being confident in what you do. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, admit it. Admit that, hey, I've never seen this problem before, but I'm going to work through it and we're going to get this figured out one way or another, right? It, it's, it's all honesty, and that goes back to attitude. It's all honesty, your integrity, everything like that. That's all wrapped up in your attitude and your demeanor. Um, and the last thing on the list of professionalism is knowledge of craft, and I put that last because the first two are far, far more important. Your appearance and honesty and attitude and everything like that, everything that is skin deep and then a little bit below skin deep, like how you treat the customer, how you are in front of the customer, how you appear, how you smell, how you act. Um, are you trying? Are you there trying to be your their friend? Because that's not what you're there for either. You're you're not there to be their friend. You're there to be their technician or their installer or whatever you're there for. That's what you're there for. So the last portion of this is knowledge of craft, and that's the reason I put it last is because it really is it's important and without the three legs, the milk stool of professionalism could not stand. So that has to be there, but I think it's the least important one of all of the sort of trinity of professionalism, uh, which would be appearance, attitude, and knowledge. So that's the last important, least important thing. 
I say it's still important because you have to know what you're doing. Um, I have to be able to obviously troubleshoot electrical circuits. I have to be able to know a sealed system. I, I have to be able to know how water pressure works, for instance. Um, I have to understand all of the systems involved in order to be a good technician so that I can help the customer out so the end result is a happy customer because that is always your end result regardless of what you feel or whatever you are in business whether you're in business for yourself or somebody else if you're free if you're working for somebody else you have to remember that you are the face you are the face of that business if you're working for yourself you're yourself you're you the only thing that you have to worry about is your reputation and how well you do things and if you want to drag that reputation through the mud I mean I guess who am I to to say anything but uh, I'm, I'm starting to kind of rabbit hole again going back to knowledge of craft I, I think that that is definitely an important thing that has to be there but it's 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 kind of secondary to how you act and how you treat people because I'm a very big believer in karma I think everything comes around um, and I think that uh, you know as a community us technicians can all learn things from each other and um, and you know we can we can help each other out as far as the knowledge of craft goes but if you yourself are not you know you don't have the attitude to go with it nobody's gonna hire you you know what I mean so with that I think I've covered pretty much everything as far as the professionalism thing goes that's been kinda heavy on my mind the past couple of days because uh, as just a technician, it's really not something that I, you know, am privy to. You know, I can talk to you guys about it, but it's it's not something that I'm really supposed to be involved in because I have my own sort of stuff. But I I take it personally because it does reflect on me, you know. So I mean, guys, it it made me physically sick. To, to hear about the stuff that they did and I lost a lot of respect for them uh, and I didn't think that I needed you know I, I had a little bit of respect for them I, I thought they were a bunch of boneheads they were a couple of boneheads but now I've just lost any shreds of respect I ever had um, so all I can do is keep my thing going and keep my integrity up keep my professionalism up and and uh try to you know not let the comp not let everybody think that that's how the company i work for operates you know so just something that's been on my mind guys i appreciate you guys hanging around with me rambling as i rabbit hole down a bunch of stuff um thank you so much for being here and i'll catch you guys on the next episode.